Hello, my name is Tasso Komanescu, and welcome to EliteGuitarist.com. Today I'll be going over the famous prelude from Bach's first cello suite, BWV 1007. Special thanks to our friends over at Guitar Salon International for providing me with this wonderful 2017 Tobias Berg spruce top guitar, which I have enjoyed playing very much. Originally the piece is in G major, but we transcribe it here for guitar to D major, which requires you to lower your sixth string down a full step to D. Okay, so the first part of this tutorial uh, we're going to be going from bar 1 through bar 22, and I'll be covering how to execute slurs accurately, some tips on interpretation, color changes, etc., and sort of my own take on this well-known and very popular concert piece in our repertoire. So, looking at bar 1, here we go. Okay, we're going to start here with an open D on the 4th string, okay? And your left hand, you're playing an A at the 2nd fret of the G string, and then an F sharp, shortly thereafter on the second fret of the high E string. And in the middle of that, you're doing a pull off from the F sharp to the open E. And a tip that I like to give is to angle your hand slightly. You don't want to be straight on, you want to angle your hand slightly, because if you're straight on, you get this sort of bright sound as opposed to a warmer, more dolce sound, okay? And halfway through the bar, you play the low D on the sixth string, so it repeats itself through bar one. And I like to use my index and ring finger here, your A finger. And in bar two, uh, we're going to be still starting with the open D, and then we go to the fourth fret of the G string, which is a B, and we're doing a pull off from the G to the F sharp, the third to the second fret on the high E string. P, I, A, A, I, A, I for the right hand. And then halfway through, we play the low open D. And I like to crescendo through that. And then in the second system, bar three, we start with the open D again, and we do a one-third bar on the second fret, which covers the C sharp, and then a pull off from the G to the F sharp, like so. And here, interpretively, I like to bring my right hand more straight on and slightly towards the bridge right here to get a brighter or more Ponticello sound. And then a low D. And then in bar four, we again start with an open D, go to the D at the third fret of the B string and do a pull off from F sharp to E. And then the low D here again, F sharp, and then C sharp at the very end of bar four. So this is our first phrase, bars one through four, and you want to crescendo from bar two, uh, sort of create some tension, really build into bar three, and then resolve it in bar four. And the right hand is sort of arbitrary here. Uh, I typically use my A finger, uh, but you can also use your M finger. So here now we're into our second phrase. This is bar five, okay? And we start with that open D, then an open B, followed by a pull off from F sharp to E, F sharp again, D, and then a slide from C sharp to D. That's what that slash mark is there, okay? And then we have a B on the third string, followed by that D, and then a C sharp on the third string, okay? And then we're gonna change positions now to the fourth position on the fourth string, hammer on from F sharp at the fourth fret to A sharp at the seventh fret, and then a pull off from G sharp at the sixth fret back to that F sharp. And I like to leave my first finger down the whole time, because you're gonna go right back to it. So this is bar five, slowly. Slide, shift, into bar six, we have this G sharp, followed by the D there at the seventh fret of the G string with an open E on top, and we alternate. And then we go to the 
sixth fret of the low D string here, which is also G sharp an octave lower, and repeat the right hand figure. And I like to use my I and A finger because of the separation between the G string and the high E string. Okay? And this takes us now to the fourth system, bar seven, where we have an open A with a C sharp on the sixth fret of the G string, followed by an open E, and then a pull off from A to G sharp, fifth to the fourth fret of the high E string, and then a pull off from A to open E on the high E string. This can be a little tricky, so what I like to do is again angle my hand, not straight on, angle my hand to get a warmer sound as opposed to a bright sound like that. Followed by a D, open E, C sharp, D, and then this phrase at the end, and then this little segment at the end of bar seven, A, C sharp, open B, which allows you transition down to the second position to grab that A. Okay, so this is bar seven slow. You can add some vibrato in the middle there. It's kind of nice. Use the open B to transition into bar eight, which is outlining a B minor chord, okay? So here we go. B on the second fret of the A string, F sharp on the fourth fret of the D string, and then a pull off from D to C sharp on the B string. And then we go back and forth between D and F sharp. And here I like to change colors. So in real time, change colors there you don't want to keep the angle of your hand the same you want to sort of relax your wrist so that you can play more straight on get that brighter sound there okay and now we're going into bar nine okay and this is a B now at the second fret of the A string followed by a G sharp to A hammer on open B then A to G sharp pull off on the third string F sharp on the fourth fret of the D string followed by it an E at the second fret. And then here we have to transition to the second half of the measure where we move our hand to the second string where we do a pull off from D to C sharp, open B, and then a pull off from A to G sharp on the fifth to the fourth fret of the high E string, F sharp at the second fret, open E, and then a D at the third fret of the second string. So this is bar nine slow shift position and you'll notice that I try to have both of my fingers down when I do a slur as opposed to kind of being lazy and having them come one after the other because sometimes you might not get lucky and miss like that as opposed to the security of having them both down and when you're coming out of bar eight have to shift with your second finger sort of quickly and then worry about your first finger. So sequential left hand movement into bar 10 where we have an open A with a C sharp at the second fret of the B string pulling off to that open B. A on the third string followed by an octave A at the fifth fret of the high E string pulling off to open E and then another A right there okay so again when you pull off to an open string you don't want to be so straight on kind of at an angle to get that warm sound and then a C sharp followed by an open E and then in the second half of the measure we have that low A again open fifth string octave A at the second fret of the third string followed by a hammer on to the B there at the fourth fret with your third finger C sharp E at the fifth fret of the B string followed by a pull off from D to C sharp and then a B and then an A on the third string. So this is bar 10 slow. Bar 11 and I like personally to lean here a little bit on this D sharp. It's a very interesting uh, dissonance here to me. It's uh, your diminished fifth, okay? and you have this open A with a D sharp at the fourth fret of the B string, and you might notice in my right hand 
that I break these notes and I also add a rest stroke with either my index finger or my middle finger and some vibrato. So coming out of bar 10, So in bar 11, we have the D sharp, A, and then a pull off from C natural to open B. C natural, A, D sharp still to A. And in the second half of the measure, we do the same sequence, but start with an F sharp on the second fret of the high E string. Okay? You can have those ring into each other. It's kind of nice. You're growing through this measure in bar 11. where we have a low second fret of the D string there. Open G at the same time, open B, open E, so P, I, M, A, F sharp with your second finger, G pulling it off to open E, open B, and then A. And notice how my first finger on my left hand is staying down the whole time to ensure that the half note rings through that half of the measure. And then we, then we repeat the phrase in the second half of bar 12, and I move my right hand closer to the bridge to do an echo. And the only difference there is at the end, we pull off from C sharp to B. So this is bar 12. One more time, slow, grow through it. And it's kind of the idea with box music that you can do linear phrasing. So when the line goes higher up on the staff, you can crescendo, and when it comes down, you can do a diminuendo or lower your volume. Okay, so this brings us to the end of page one. We're still here in part one of this tutorial on box prelude uh, from the first cello suite, BWV 1007. So moving on to page two now, at the top of the page there, you'll see bar 13, okay? And you're coming out of this pull-off here from bar 12, which buys you time to get to the start of bar 13, where we have an F sharp, fourth fret of the low D string, with an A sharp on the third fret of the G string, and a C sharp here on the second fret of the B string with an open E. So P, I, M, I, M, A, M, A, M, or A sharp, C sharp, A sharp, C sharp. Same thing in the second half of the measure, but we move the bass note an octave up to the fourth fret of the D string. Okay, so. And this is what our left hand looks like here at the end of bar 13, and we're gonna have to do a quick transition to the B and the D at the start of bar 14. And so you wanna make sure that your first finger can make that jump from the C sharp to the B because your second finger is only going one string adjacent, whereas the first finger has to jump three strings. Okay, so. Jump. Okay, and then you do a pull off to the C sharp followed by a B, D, hammer on, C sharp to D, E, C sharp. Second half of the measure. And you'll notice the rest there in the bass. So you can let go of the bar uh, three beats into bar 14. So I'm holding the bar here. Let go. G pull off to F sharp. E, D at the fifth fret of the fifth string. Notice how my fourth and third finger are down at the same time to ensure a good slur. E at the second fret. D at the fifth fret of the A string. And then we're off to bar 15 where I like to do a little fermata at the start on the C sharp, like so. A little vibrato, and then G at the fifth fret of the fourth string, and then A at the second fret of the third string. And I like to use my thumb and index finger, thumb on the fifth and fourth string, and then index finger on the third string accent those A's if you like. 
change the color. And then bar 16, we're gonna shift our third finger up one fret to the D, F sharp on the fourth fret, and then a pull off from C natural to B on the third string between the fifth and the fourth fret. Add the low D. So the sequence there is between C sharp and F sharp, okay? You can always change the color halfway through, it's really nice. And then uh, here in bar 17, coming out of bar 16, we can leave our third finger down on the D because it's a common finger. And we're going D, G, the fifth fret, and then a pull off between the B and the A on the third string. And this requires a bit of a stretch with the left hand. And then we have a low D with that B. G, B, G. So you can repeat that in the second half of the measure. And that's what's nice about bars 15 through 17. And even in earlier on in the piece uh, through the first three measures that oftentimes in this piece, uh, the measures repeat themselves halfway through. Okay, so this is bars 15 through 17 slowly. Shift. Leave your third finger down. Okay, and this is what your left hand looks like at the end of bar 17. Notice my index finger on my left hand. I can slide it now up from the second fret to the sixth fret of the G string, right? And we start with an open D, bar 18, C sharp with your first finger, and then a pull off from G to F sharp between your third and second finger there. Then add the low D. And you notice that I like to emphasize uh, beat four of this measure with a rest stroke and the index finger on my right hand. some vibrato there, uh, invokes a little bit of Segovia. It, it's quite nice, especially at tempo. And then we're off to the races there in uh, bar 19, and you can use that open D to buy yourself time to change positions here, third finger, octave higher, on the seventh fret of the G string, which is your D, and then a pull off with your fourth to first finger between F sharp and E on the 7th and 5th fret of the B string, followed by a low D with F sharp, D, shift now, C sharp pull off to B, shift down with your first finger by two frets, A pull off to open G, F sharp, E, D pull off to C sharp, B, open A, and then we land on bar 20, okay? And uh, on B2 of bar 19, I like to rest my thumb on the fourth string to prepare for that F sharp there. So this is bar 19 slowly. And then G sharp there at the start of bar 20. Okay, I like to do a little bit of vibrato. Lean on that note, okay, in tempo. Then E at the seventh fret of the A string, open B, so thumb, thumb, middle finger here so that my index finger can grab the C sharp there. Uh, third string, second finger, sixth fret, D at the seventh fret, open B, and then a hammer on from C sharp to D. And it repeats again in the second half of the measure. You want to make sure you don't pluck that C sharp too hard because then the hammer onto the D won't come out. And then in bar 21, I like to change the color. Really nice sort of uh, touch, if you will. Uh, but it's not for everyone, but you should definitely try relaxing your right hand wrist to get that brighter sound. We're going to a G at the fifth fret of the low D string, E still at the seventh fret, A at the seventh fret, open B, and then that C sharp that we had there. So we have two common fingers here, the E and the C sharp between bars 20 and 21.
This is bar 20 and 21, slowly. Add some vibrato. And then bar 22, you want to do a full bar. major bar chord shape, you know, in standard pop guitar. The only reason that it sounds different is because the low E string is tuned down to D. Okay, so notice how we have common fingers in bar 22 as well, that E and the C sharp and the A. Okay, so the transition looks like this. Collapse the bar with your left hand. As soon as you get to the E here, let go of your pinky so that you can grab the G sharp at the ninth fret of the B string and then start your pad thumb strum through all six of the strings. And notice that my hand goes through all the strings and I put a little extra weight on that high E string, okay? And you can start the strum before your pinky gets back to the A from the G sharp to the A, so it's more legato, if you will. Vibrato, there's a fermata there. You can kind of rest a little bit, gather your thoughts, and then we'll move on to uh, part two of this tutorial box prelude from the first fellow suite 